These are 24 iPhone apps you've probably never heard of, but are super useful. Apps for custom icons on your lock screen, quick access to links from a third-party keyboard, if you're a designer, access to specific color hex codes, an app I can't even talk about in this video, speed test an external SSD, see the source code on a website, and add actions into shortcuts that you can't get with the built-in app. All right, first up is Anybox. Anybox is like a more powerful read later service you can save videos, links, even files right here to your Anybox account. You can also create multiple lists, star certain items, filter by kind, like whether they're links or maybe they're files. And it's right in the share sheet so you can add things to Anybox at any time. And whether you're on a website or looking at a file, just hit the share button and you'll see Anybox right there. Tap Anybox, you can add a comment right here. Automatically star it as you're saving it and even download it locally if you wanna be able to read it when you don't have internet access. Number two is an app called Achoo. I, you know, I didn't plan that, but it's pretty good. So Achoo is actually a Safari extension. You can enable it when you're in Safari on your iPhone or iPad. Click on the little A symbol down at the bottom left. You'll see all your extensions up here. You can tap Manage Extensions, and here you can toggle extensions on or off. Once you toggle this extension on, then in this Extensions menu, just tap Achoo HTML, and you can actually see the HTML source code for whatever website you're viewing right here. You can tap the Share button, save it as an HTML or text document. You can change the font if you wanna see it a little bigger. And you can even edit the code to see how those changes would affect the website and then just refresh it to get back to the original state. Number three is actually a newer app from OWC called Disk Test. Not only does it quickly show you the storage on your current iPhone, but you can plug in an external SSD like this OWC Envoy Pro Mini. I use this all the time when recording ProRes footage directly to an external SSD. Then I can press the play button, to tell me the read and write speed right here in the app. Helpful if you wanna know if a drive can actually record ProRes directly, or if you're just wondering if you have a USB 3 cable versus a slower cable. And of course, links to all these apps will be down in the video description. Number four, this is an app called Facades. It's actually if you're an Apple Store nerd, or you just wanna peruse to learn about some other Apple stores, search for an Apple Store up here. This is actually my local Apple Store. You can see when it opened, which was actually May 2008. You can see the address right here, and you can even go into the timeline if there were any special events. And it gives you information about that store up here, like whether the layout is a classic layout, even gives you the rollout number, and you can even jump to the website for that particular store using that link in the app. Number five, the audio editing app called Hokusai. This is made by Wuji Juice, the makers of Ferrite, one of my favorite apps. I use it all the time for editing podcasts. But Hokusai has a couple tools that Ferrite does not have, and sometimes you need it. For instance, I can hit the little wrench icon on a file here. I can convert to mono, split stereo tracks. You can record audio in here directly as well. But one of the things I really like to do is actually retime audio here in the app. You can apply lots of different effects, even like reverb, EQ, and all that. But reverse is the one feature that I use sometimes. Number five, this is for the Lego fans out there. Sometimes you want to be able to refer back to a manual. Maybe you need to rebuild a Lego. Well, you can actually save Lego sets right here in the app, refer to it later. They'll be saved to your account. Get the entire building manual right here on your iPhone. You can also get this app for iPad, so you have it as a little larger. It tells you which bag number to use. And here you have the steps. It even rotates the pieces, which is kind of cool. Scroll through, jumping to the different steps. It even highlights the pieces that are new to this step. You can use the ghost view, which shows you exactly what you're building. And when you get a new Lego set, you can just put the number of the manual right here, search for the set, and then save that manual to your account. Actually, that was number six. So number seven and eight are actually two apps for the HomeKit and Smart Home fans out there. HomePass is an indispensable app. If you use HomeKit, you definitely need it. What this can do is it will actually access your home data and you can add your devices, including the setup code, and you can even get the QR code. If you ever need to factory reset a device, you can have the code saved here, then you don't have to worry about the sticker wearing out or keeping the manual for your devices. I also love that there's an Apple Watch component. So if you ever need to resync something, you can actually have the QR code here on your Apple Watch, open the home app on your iPhone and scan it and repair that device even after you factory reset it. So you definitely need HomePass and also Home Paper is a fun app where you can actually create custom wallpapers that will look great in the home app. You see, I've actually created a home paper with a picture of my house there at the top right has a nice look, and then it's custom to your house. Highly recommend. Number nine, 10, and 11, I'm gonna group these three together because these all add actions to the Shortcuts app. The apps themselves don't do a whole lot, but if I search for Toolbox Pro, one of the three apps that I'm talking about, 
You can add all these different actions, and a lot of these actions are not available by default in the Shortcuts app. Also, the Actions app adds a lot of device-specific actions where you can even get the state of your device. Things like Get Device Orientation. I use that in the Action Button video where I go through building shortcuts where you can make the Action Button on your iPhone 15 Pro do different things based on the state of your phone. I'll link that video above and put it in the description. Likewise, Data Jar is a great application that adds actions if you're dealing with a lot of data, want to keep track of numbers, highly recommend these three apps to supercharge your shortcuts. All right, number 12. This is actually if you travel a lot, especially internationally. This is the MPC app. You can protect it with Face ID and a PIN. But when you're returning back to the United States, electronically fill out your customs form here in the app. Select where you're returning from and the terminal. Select travelers, might just be yourself. And then it'll walk you through these questions step by step and you'll have an electronic version of your customs form right here on your phone. To make sure your airport or cruise port actually accepts this kind, click the View Supported Locations, and this will tell you all the places you can use this app. Number 13 is Lock Launcher. I love Lock Launcher because you can create custom shortcuts that you put on your lock screen. I like doing things like podcasts, which doesn't currently have a lock screen widget. So with Lock Launcher, I can customize my lock screen. Let me add some widgets here. And as you can see, podcasts is not currently an option by default on the iPhone, but I can go to Lock Launcher, choose a widget, and all the widgets that I've created are available right here. And I can add shortcuts to the Home app, Wallet app, any application on my iPhone. I can program those all in the Lock Launcher app. I actually do a ton more, like even adding live activities. Highly recommend you check it out to customize your phone. Next is an app called Mac Tracker. If you're a Mac nerd or maybe you talk about Macs a lot, you can actually find lots of information on your current Mac or just one you're interested in. Here's my model, Mac Studio. I got the original. You can see when it was introduced, March 2022, when it was discontinued, model number, and lots of other information about the defaults of the device. Really cool, especially for us Apple nerds. And it's got tons of Apple devices in here. Even has legacy devices in here like the Newton. All right, this next app is really cool. This is called Mapper. This is another extension for Safari. Once it's enabled, it means whenever you search for a location and maybe you've gotten the Google Maps result, Typically, when you hit the directions here, it'll try to open the Google Maps app. But with the Mapper extension, if I tap this Get Directions button, it will actually open this address in Apple Maps ready to get me directions. This way, if you don't use Google Maps or don't even have it installed, you can always load that Get Directions button directly in the Maps app. Number 16, this is an app called OneTap. OneTap is actually a third-party keyboard, and here you can customize different shortcuts like links or even documents and then they're easily accessible wherever you have your keyboard. This is really helpful if maybe you want to share a link to something, maybe you're replying to a comment with a video you typically share. I'll tap and hold the keyboard switcher down here and then go to one tap. And here I've loaded multiple links, like my video on editing podcasts on iPad or maybe my YouTube channel. And if I just tap that, it'll automatically add the URL for my YouTube channel. I don't have to copy and paste it from anywhere and it's accessible wherever my keyboard is accessible. Great for quick access to links that you share all the time. Number 17, Pastel is an amazing app. You can use it for all your devices, Mac, iPad, and iPhone, and it lets you create custom color palettes. Maybe it's your brand, or maybe you're doing client work, and you can choose what colors are here, get the hex code. I can even tap and hold on it and get all these different values for this particular color. I can copy the hex code and then maybe I'm doing something in Pixelmator. I can even create a new palette. We'll just call this the test palette. I can then upload an image. Let's choose uh, one of these Apple Watch images and it will actually pull the colors from the image and I can save this as a palette right here in the Pastel app. This is then synced to all my devices, iPad, Mac, iPhone. Absolutely love Pastel. Next is Peak of View. I've actually included a tutorial of this, but what I love about Peak of View is you can choose some specific photos, automatically enable guided access, and now if you wanted to show someone some photos, but make sure they don't have access to the rest of your phone, here they can tap the photos, they can scroll through, they can rotate your device, even videos, but if they try to swipe to go home, they can't. Or Control Center, Notification Center, they are locked to the app. That's because I've automatically enabled guided access whenever I open this app. Then in order to get out of guided access, you actually triple click the side button, put in a passcode, and then I can end right here and then swipe up to go home. If you want to learn how to use Peak of View with guided access automatically, check out this video right here or the links in the description. Next is an app called Play. Think of it as like a custom playlist creator for YouTube videos. So here you can actually add channels, then save videos that you want to watch for later. And tapping a video brings you directly to that video here in the app. I'm wearing that hoodie right now. 
You can also create playlists, add multiple videos, and browse channels down here, add videos from that channel. You can see the videos you've watched, tap and hold on one, and then you can even see details on the video, like when it was added, published, the duration of the video, add some notes about it. You can even rate the video, follow the channel. Then if I go down to channels down here, I can see videos that have been recently added, swipe on one, and then add it to my app to watch. And now that video will be right here, and I can just tap and watch it. A cleaner and really nice way of keeping track of YouTube videos you want to watch. Next, you might have heard of this, but it's an app called Portal. This is a great ambient sound application. You can choose different sounds. It actually gives you a nice little visual. It's also now available for Mac, which is nice. But a really cool feature here is it will actually integrate with your smart lights. It can connect to Nanoleaf, Philips Hue, and just your HomeKit lights that change color. It'll change the color and ambience of your room depending on the scene that you have chosen. Cool visuals, great sounds, highly recommend. All right, in the home stretch, here's 21. This is an app called Scorecard. This is great if you like board games or maybe you're just keeping track of scores at a sports game. When my son was playing football, I was keeping track of all his game scores. I can input his team, another team, keep track just by hitting the plus and minus, just a quick and easy way of keeping score. Or maybe you're doing some board games, you can add a new session, add players or add teams, and all your scores can be kept right here. Great for Scrabble as well. And uh, I apparently lost that Scrabble game, but cool to go back and see. Also have a history of when you lost and won games like Scrabble. Now this next app, I can't even talk about like for real, but I'll just show the app right here and tell you, if you wanna see this video, you actually have to go to my website. That link is in the video description, but this app plus another app is really powerful. I can't even tell you, trust me, I recommend. This next app, if you watch a lot of TV shows, TV forecast is really fun, or you just wanna see when the next episode is coming out. You can add shows from different streaming services, see when the next episode comes out and at what time. You can see things like the cast, go back to shows that you've already watched and see what episodes you still have left. You can mark them as watched. It also does movies as well. And if there is a release date for a movie like Dune part two, you can see how many days until that movie comes out. Or if there are movies you are following, you can see which ones were out now. All right, and the last app, you've probably heard of it before, but I can't recommend enough Widgetsmith for creating custom widgets on your iPhone and your iPad. I also have Watchsmith. Even if you only use it for this one use case, which is putting a photo on your home screen. I love doing that, especially on my weekend focus mode. I'll actually flip to that right now. And I've added a Widgetsmith widget right here. Just so I have a photo of my family right here on my home screen. You can have multiple photos, create as many different widgets you rotate through with Widgetsmith. It's just a great way to customize your device even more. So those are 24 obscure iPhone apps that are actually really useful and I still use pretty regularly. And the one that I can't talk about for real, uh, check out my website, beard.fm. You can also follow me on social media. I'm at Steven Robles on Threads, X, Instagram, Mastodon, all of that. Those links are down in the description. Let me know if you have any questions about those apps or if you have an obscure app that you absolutely love but no one is talking about, leave a comment below this video. I'd love to cover it here on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button before you go. And thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.